Professor Shaviro, uh, there are two governing entities that have an interest in this. One of them is a weak entity, the Federal Elections Commission, which has basically abdicated enforcement because it's stuck in a standoff between the Democratic members of it and the Republican members. So they don't really enforce anything anymore. But what does the Federal Election Commission say in their rules that they don't enforce about this money, about using campaign money to pay lawyers? Well, that's not, I'm, I'm more knowledgeable about the tax than about that, but I've researched that a little bit. And they have a, the so-called irrespective rule. So it has to be litigation that would be occurring irrespective of uh, whether the person was running for office. Now, I think there's just no doubt, well, I hate to opine on federal election law, but there's no doubt that they're paying for the Trump legal case about the insurrection in the 14th Amendment, that that was legit. Some, but something else, like, for example, the uh, Gene Harris trial, there, it's just uh, totally different. The E. Gene and, Carroll uh, trial. Yeah. I'm sorry, Gene yeah. Carroll trial. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that is highly like, likely, from what I know about election law, to be illegal. On the other hand, as you point out, it's not going to be interpreted. So maybe the tax law, though we're not sure that's going to be enforced either here, that might be a, a more uh, salient Way to look at it. Yeah. So on the on the tax question, uh, the IRS and tax law, they don't care what the FEC says or any anyone else says about what income is and what it isn't. They have their own definitions of income. How does the IRS see this? Well, uh, I think the IRS, the actual IRS, is probably lying low on this. But if you ask how should the IRS see it from the, the point of view of enforcement, uh, it's really not one question. It's a bunch of questions. And the reason is that there are a bunch of different expenditures. Again, there's really no chance that he has taxable income, I think, on uh, having the Republican National Committee pay for his uh, defending his right to be on the ballot uh, without regard to the merits of that claim of the Supreme Court decision. On the other hand, when he has a personal uh, lawsuit because he sexually assaulted and then defamed someone, that's a little bit different. So I think the tax question kind of when they give him money, if they give him money to pay for something that's deductible, it really doesn't matter because the income is offset by the deduction. On the other hand, if they gave him money to pay for his groceries, that would be income and no deduction. So we have to look at the different uh, criminal and civil trials and kind of see where they are. And it seems to me to be pretty clear that when you're defending yourself against defamation uh, uh, and uh, based on sexual assault, the tax standard for deducting legal fees that you pay is called the origin of the claim uh, rule. So there was, a, uh, there was a corporate executive who had a divorce, and his wife wanted to take half of the stock in the divorce. And he said he needed to, he would then lose control of the company, be fired as CEO, and he therefore needed to uh, have uh, deduct fighting her in the divorce. And the Supreme Court said, we don't care if that's true or not. It's the origin of the claim. This claim, the legal fees, came from your defending a divorce, and that's a personal matter. So I think that just clearly applies to the civil suit in New York where he just uh, faced $88 million of liability. Now, on the other hand, the, uh, the thing that you've been talking about and that everyone's been thinking about about the suit on Monday, that is uh, his... His paying for that is probably deductible in respect to his business. I mean, to give it an analogy, if Tony Soprano is uh, indicted under the federal racketeering laws, I think Tony Soprano can probably deduct uh, paying his legal fees. So again, here, having someone else pay them uh, and not including it because you can deduct what it was done for it makes it a wash. Now, the some of the other cases are, are in different uh, uh, settings. For example, you were talking about the Washington civil trials that are yet to come. And of course, we know all about the other criminal trials. And on those, I think he has a pretty good case for deducting it. And the, but on the other hand, it's not it's not ironclad. There are actually counter arguments against the saying that he has to include it, which would probably take five or 10 minutes more to explain. Uh, but on the, the New York civil defamation, I just don't see any chance that's not taxable income. Uh, Tim O'Brien, uh, taxable income is not the first thing Donald Trump thinks about when people give him money. No, and, and you know, he's bleeding small donor <clears throat> contributions. Mm -hmm. And 
That's been the lifeblood of his campaign fundraising. And it may be that all of these shenanigans are starting to register with all the little people who've been giving Donald Trump money and the idea that, that he's actually carrying their values and their needs into the world instead of just lining his own wallet and paying off his lawyers with that money. And I have to wonder, in the midst of all this, where is the FEC? Uh, you know, well, they gave up enforcement years ago. It's this horrible political jam that they're in because they're supposed to have an equal number of Democrats appointed, an equal number of Republicans appointed. In the past, they all had the same attitude toward uh, running clean campaigns and making sure yeah. that the laws were observed. The, the Republicans have blocked every single enforcement the, uh, they've tried to do there at the FEC. But couldn't someone bring a complaint to them nonetheless that the FEC would be compelled yeah, they, to take no, a no, look no. at they, they have People do file complaints, yeah. and the Republicans block the procedure within the FEC, which they control. Uh, you know, either side can control that procedure. We could go on and on. Another about, blow for good uh, yeah, government. about the FEC. And Donald Trump's been lucky to be there during that era. Uh, Professor Shavira and Tim O'Brien, thank you both very much for joining this discussion.